and she's on a church. She's about that high. And they're all over Ireland. And sometimes the, the finger's here, right at the clitoris. And sometimes she's got a big happy smile on her face. And sometimes the mouth, see, sometimes the mouth is like that, like oh, and sometimes it's like that. But they're always knees spread wide apart, hands on the genitals. No baby head. And the women like to look at them. Uh, it, I think it was a way to show a little girl you have an exit. And so you don't be afraid that you can't find an exit because there is one even if you can't find it. it it's there when you need it. And <clears throat> the thing that made me know how important that can be is I talked to an African American grand midwife many years ago, maybe 1980, and she was talking about when she was young. She was old enough to be my mother. And she said in her day, nobody told you where the baby would come out. So you knew you were pregnant, you saw a midwife, you could not ask your husband where the baby came out. Um, you couldn't ask the midwife where your baby came out. You couldn't ask your mother where the baby came out. It was culturally prohibited. So here she was terrified because she says, this baby's getting bigger and bigger, where's it going to come out? She had a little mirror, she looked all over her body, she couldn't find a place the baby could come out except she thought her mouth. She thought she saw the baby's big toe back there. Now that shows how a pregnant woman who's scared can think because if that was the baby's big toe, where were the knees? How could she swallow? I mean, she thought she was going to go, and the baby would come out. And that was a more comforting thought than the baby would come out between her legs because she could see no place. So that's, I think, why those old midwives said we have to have this figure in the town. You'll find them on Irish churches. Sometimes it's up on the wall. Um, these are the ones that weren't destroyed by the, the Christian um, priests that later had this... Um, fear of sexuality. Yeah. What was the, could you write the name? Oh, the, write the name, yes. Thank you. They make them in chocolate. You can get them in necklaces. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sheila is the Irish word for woman. But if you Google this, you'll find a map of Ireland, uh, England, Scotland, Wales, and it's in the birth story in the movie because I got to go where this place where my favorite one was. But they're very nice to look at, and, and archaeologists have no idea what they're for. The ones that are most obviously uh, touching their genitals are hidden downstairs in the Dublin National Museum because nobody knows how to explain to the children what's happening. <laughs> they're they're not an, it's not like an ideal Greek you know look at the perfect body with the rippling muscles this is a kind of like a cartoon like a cartoon okay so all right so now so the vibrator can be a way to prevent rupture another thing is. Um, I like squatting in upright positions to bring the baby down to the perineum. But I, then I, I want the woman not to push hard. I don't want her to push too fast. And so I try to tell her, don't, don't be in a hurry. We can go slowly. And, you know, there's, and there's, um, I had a woman, I thought she would tear, and I knew she was a singer. I asked her to sing. That fixed it because no longer was she breathing in this sort of way. The woman that looked, you know, is more apt to tear. You can feel how that tightens you know, everything below when you breathe in a very shallow, fast way. Um, dark room. If she's in water, um, sometimes they push a little too fast because they think the water will automatically prevent them from tearing. You know. You know Maybe it's good if she uh, could slow her down. 
because sometimes the water will prevent a tear, but not always. It's not a guarantee. Um, but you know, in Sweden, that's the most uh, dangerous thing. I've it's seen it on television. It's so dangerous. dangerous. Oh, they are so dangerous yes, in water. Yes, so dangerous. So and how many, how many children have died from being born in water? Maybe one? Yeah. Yes. Um, one. Okay. So, if you had, you know, and then how many children have died from being born not in water? You <laughs> can't even count. You can't even count. So why don't we get scared of being born not in water if more children die not being born in water than died born in water? It's illogical, isn't it? Yes. And, and fear often is illogical. Just way. How many of you know what this thing is? This, you know, one of you just brought this to me. It's a Swedish invention. Yes, that's... This is the Monterre, you know, the Monterre invention that apparently the doctor who made it is having trouble getting midwives to use it because they go, huh? You mean I'm supposed to slip this inside the woman so this this rough bit is uh, inside her as the baby's head's coming out? And then we're supposed to go, uh, you know, and you're supposed to be like uh, the Finnish guy who says that he has the answer to the more um, rupture. And who knows if that's true or not. I doubt that the way I saw it described, you're supposed to go. <laughs> if you had to look at anything that ugly, you know, I'm going to make a project about it. I don't think it would work. But it's interesting. Uh, there it is. Made in Sweden. <laughs> and, and because there's all this fear, it, you know, again, you have the, uh, okay, there's a technological solution for this. And nobody ever thinks, what if the, what if the elephant in the zoo, uh, when she has her baby, will have a tear? How do we prevent this? So maybe I don't speak English. <laughs> or, I know, we'll put her on her back. That's it. We'll put her on her back. I'll we'll invent an elephant one of these. <laughs> you know, we all assume that the elephant was made right. Why do we assume the woman is not? And that's the big one. It's, it seems so hard to believe that everything could be as upside down as it is. And, and it didn't used to be this bad um, here. Yeah? You used to have, not so long ago, with a living memory, you had a cesarean rate that was less than 10. Yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. And now you're becoming more like the US. Mm -hmm. Why, why, mm -hmm. why? And what the US, we have to look at the trends. The US is getting more like Brazil. So if Sweden is getting more like the U.S., Sweden is getting like, more like Brazil. And if you get the C-section rate over 30%, it goes pretty quickly to 40. You can't pretend, you can't pretend it will stay at 20 whatever it is here. It will go higher unless you do something big. And so I'm hoping that your health minister is an intelligent, thoughtful person. <laughs> Good hope. Uh, and then you have to educate this person. Because right now they're spending a lot of money, I think, in the wrong way. Uh, why not have enough? You see, the word midwife in English, with woman, means that the old idea of the midwife was that she doesn't go take care of this woman, and then she leaves the room and go take care of this woman and leave her and then go here and take care of this one. She's supposed to stay with her. But it's the accountants that say, oh, that would be too expensive. We can't spend all that money on birth. Except that you do spend money on birth with too many C-sections. Because you have all of these IVs, you have the, the epidurals, you know, you have to spend all that money on the uh, CDG. It could be a woman with a piece of wood like it used to be, <laughs> listening to the baby. And, and when you show this, I'd like to take a, a pinard into a medical school and show it to obstetricians and they say, what's that? And I say, that's for listening. That's a penis ball. You can hear the 
heart rate with that? I said, you could hear it if you lay your ear on the woman's belly. Um, it's astonishing how ignorant we can be when we have, you know, we have too much technology. We forget what hands are for. We forget what ears are for. And so the ignorance multiplies. And you think, how could we have a baby if we didn't have all this technology? And the other thing that happens is uh, they get worried about home birth because they see sometimes some scary complications in hospitals and they don't know that a lot of the complications were caused by fear. Not just the woman's fear, but multiplied that by the doctor's fear, the father's fear, the mother's, or somebody just entered the room and scared because suddenly throw everybody into a tizzy and then they're about, you know, then they can't think well. And so we have to, I mean, I think that some of the problem is that the, um, <coughs> the books, the very medical books, the, the medical books uh, could be written better. You should, how to be calm. I mean, where's, where's the directions on how to calm yourself down? In the books. I think it should be right up in the first chapter. It's more important to do that than to know what's the Latin name for all the body parts or whatever. How do you be calm? Because every farmer knows that's super important in caring for animals. You care for an animal that's bigger than you, you're not going to mistreat it. And animals, you know, have a price. You know your prized cow, you're not going to try and put her on her back to give birth because you know that that would be a bad idea. <laughs> but it's this Western culture that says at once we're better than all the other mammals. You know, we can think, we can make these machines, we can we drive our cars, we can do all this stuff. But then when it comes to giving birth we say at that point we're really inferior. And that's, that's a stupid thought.